We're on the show floor here at Fuse 24 in Dublin. I'm here with Richard McKenzie. He is Distinguished Engineer for Wireless Networks at BT. Richard, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having Good me. Good to see you. Um, so what brings you to uh, Fuse event this year? Well, there's probably two areas for Fuse. I mean, in, in general, and what's really exciting is to just, just get an idea of just how Open Run is doing. Um, so the, the amount of people attending, the, the updates they've got, I think Fuse is probably the best best event to get those um, those updates on the ecosystem as a whole. Um, and then more specifically around the RIC, that's one of the areas I'm focusing my work on at the moment. Um, it's about basically presenting the results. So we've got lots of, lots of participants from some of our collaborative projects um, at the event. So we're sort of showcasing um, what we've done so far in those projects. But we're also trying to make sure that people are aware of what we're planning in the future so they can get involved because it's, uh, it's a very ex exciting time for the RIC. Okay, um, so can you just tell, because the, this collaborative work I think is, is part of some of the, the working groups uh, organized by uh, TIP, which organizes this event as well. So can you just tell us about BT's role within TIP? Okay, so um, BT's involved in several projects within, within TIP. Um, one of them is the TIP Rear Group, um, which is um, run intelligence and automation, and it's essentially looking to develop and commercialize the RIC platforms. Okay. Um, and, and I'm one of the co-chairs of the TIPRIA group. Um, so in terms of our involvement, we, we, we work on, um, we've, we've done a number of projects, but at the moment we've got one active project that's, that's done through, through TIP. So TIP are actually the project leads. Um, and then we've got some UK government funding. And BT, we play one of the roles in that consortium. We are the operator participant. We've also got a number of vendors that create the RIC platforms and uh, the apps that go on the RIC and the other parts of the network, you know, the core network and, and, every, and the, um, the test environments. So all together we come together and we, we do this testing which is focused on use cases which have been developed within the TIPRIA group. Um, and then we're feeding the results from that project back into TIPRIA so that not just the participants of the project, but the TIPRIA group as a whole get to understand and learn and benefit from, from those activities. So um, just to swing back for a second to, to the RIC, so this is the RAN Intelligent Controller. Uh, you know, it's, it's not new, but it's kind of, uh, this is a, a, a technology that seems to be gaining momentum now, seems to be more interest, more engagement with it. How would you describe um, the RIC and the role it might play in networks? Um, it's, well, it's, it's certainly the most exciting component in the network, I think, partly because it's new, but, but it's, it's the brain of the network. So what we really want as an operator is a dynamic, reconfigurable network. So when we want to provide a range of different services, we can quickly reconfigure the network and do things and launch service efficiently and easily. Um, and the RIC seems to be the way to do that. And so that's what we're trying to achieve. And I think that's what um, the, the, the key driver of the RIC is. Um, so in, 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 in those senses, the, that's what the RIC can become. In the early days, it's doing some of the more basic things. So it's doing the automation features. Um, we're starting to look at how it can do optimization. We're taking one use case at a time. Um, and what we're doing within the TIPRIA group now and within the Ariane project, we're also looking at what I'd say is the last big challenge for the RIC before we can see true commercial deployments, and that is conflict mitigation. Right. So okay. if we think of use cases like energy saving, that's got a lot of attention at this, at this event. It's, it's very important, and the, the, the main objective is turn things off when they're not needed, save energy. Whereas a lot of the other use cases are about performance optimization. So when you want extra resources just to make those minor improvements here and there, there's a, there's a conflict immediately observable that when you're trying to turn things off and you want to turn things on at the same time, there's going to be a conflict. But some of the other conflicts are not so obvious, and that's the, that's the area that we're trying to explore now. And as an industry, we need to make sure that we're um, aware of what those conflicts can be, but also how to resolve them. And once we're in a position that that is um, stable, then we can actually deploy the RIC and we will be able to select applications from multiple vendors, piece them together as we need, and the conflicts will be well managed and the overall service will be the range of services that the operator wants. Okay. Uh, and you mentioned there the, uh, the Ariane uh, project. I think that stands for Accelerating RAN Intelligence Across Network Ecosystems. That right? sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
is that still an ongoing project as well? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so that, that's um, so that started last year. Um, it'll be wrapping up in, in March next year. Um, so we've gone through several stages in that project so far. We've got two different RIC platforms and we've got three different RIC uh, um, application vendors. So what we've done up to now is we've developed those different applications, tested them individually on the different RIC platforms, and now we're getting on to the, what I think is the most interesting part, is the, the conflict mitigation aspect. Right. So I think what we've done so far, we've done the easiest type of conflict mitigation where all of the apps come from a single vendor. So reasonably straightforward, and you'd be surprised if there were any big problems. And what we're coming on to, I think we're starting this month, is, is, the, is the, the real conflicts where we've got multi-vendors and we're mixing up applications, including energy saving, quads enhancement, traffic, traffic steering. We're going to be mixing those different applications together and those applications come from different vendors and we're going to see how, um, you know, how they react, how they, does one, does one application win over the other? Um, do they both make each other fail? We're not sure what, what to expect and basically whatever we find, we're going to be feeding that back into the rear subgroup and so we can make decisions, what do we need to do? Do we need to influence standards um, within ORAN Alliance? For the near real-time RIC and the non-real-time RIC, they're, they're now looking at conflict mitigation and right. making sure that the right message is in, in place to detect and resolve um, conflicts. And what we can do with our project is we can actually feed first-hand knowledge of conflicts that we've experienced um, and how we could resolve them into those industry groups. Okay. And are you getting the sense that um that there are more companies now starting to develop these, the, the R apps and the X apps that will run on, on, on the RIC platforms. Do you, is there momentum there? Uh, absolutely. I, th I think in terms of multi-vendor, that's probably the, the most successful part of, of Open RAN. There really is um, a big opportunity there and, and a big opportunity for, for, for genuine new entrants. So if, you've only got, if you're a small company um, and you're only providing one, one specific thing, um, creating an X app or an R app is something that really is achievable, um, and we've seen seen support from the the, the RIC platforms or, or the RIC vendors to um, help those those app developers port their apps onto their onto those various RICs. Um, so it's it's something that we've seen with a past project Ari 5G. The the main thing that we demonstrated was third party applications can be brought onto a, someone else's RIC. Um, now what we're now what we're looking at is can we actually do that where a third party application not just goes onto one RIC, but can actually be moved onto multiple RICs. Um, and and that's, that seems to be achievable. And there was a RIC forum earlier in the year. We saw there were applications, operators are doing them. We've, we've done a, a one or two ourselves in the past. Um, there are universities creating applications. There are the, what you'd call it, you know, the, the, the big RAN vendors, they're doing the applications. We've got the disruptor RAN vendors. You can, you can get applications from any of these experts and you can actually piece together so you can get the expertise from one area and expertise from another area and bring them together to create a, your, your unique service um, combination. Yeah, now, this seems to be, you know, in open RAN conversations over the years, there's been a lot of talk about multi-vendor and innovation and this does seem to be where that is going to happen rather than in the... Absolutely. In the, in, the, in the broader RAN software uh, space. Um, so for, for BT, um, how will this work, um, you know, how could this work eventually play out in terms of what BT does? Um, you know, is, is there a vision that at some point that um, these kind of uh, uh, controllers will be able to manage um, any kind of uh, sort of a RAN environment? Well, yeah, so as, as I say that the, the big prize is if we can demonstrate this is the way to achieve a reconfigurable network. And, yeah. um, and, and not just open RAN, because I think a lot of people go, oh, Rick, that's just for open RAN, but increasingly that's not the case, is it? Uh, well, it's, it, I guess people have different definitions of what open RAN is, but if, if you say, what's the alternative to open RAN, I'm not sure which vendors we have available that don't claim to have an open RAN solution. So, I, 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 yeah, I think the features that are embedded in the RIC, or whether you want to call it a RIC, those are, those are what we need to, to get the reconfigurable network. Um, and, and I think in terms of what BT wants to do with it, so in, in the short term, 
our use cases have, have always been around the, the small cell opportunities, the private networks and, and neutral host deployments. And there's, there's a lot of value there for showing just how powerful the RIC can be because especially with private networks, it's all about creating a, a unique service um, with um, existing components. And so if you can piece them together and create unique services that, that, that are maybe unique just to that one private network, then that's really gonna show the value of the RIC. In the longer term, people are always asking about, you know, the big prize, the, the, uh, the macro networks. That's something that we want to achieve. And, and at the moment we see the macro network is, is it fundamentally for enhanced mobile broadband. But now the industry, and, and certainly in the UK, we're seeing that we're migrating to, um, to standalone 5G. And that's where it becomes much more exciting. We're then talking about different slices, different, um, different types of services. And as we start to see customers that want different slices and, and uh, we want to be able to create that on our network, that's where the real value comes from the RIC, where we can actually reconfigure the network to get those services or slices that the, that the end customer will want. Okay. okay, so I mean, some really interesting areas of development there, Richard. Um, you know, and this is something that we're very interested in at Telecom TV, the development of the RIC. And it's good to see that it's kind of, you know, getting more airtime now than it maybe was in, in the past couple of years. So thanks for bringing us up to speed with what BT is doing, you know, for itself, but also in collaboration at, at TIP and look forward to chatting with you again in the future. Thank you.